Have you wondered about living elsewhere in your retirement? Well, we have almost daily. No, it's not a simple decision, especially when two people are involved. Hi, this is Gil and Jean of Retire There, a podcast about retirement destinations. We live in Brooklyn, New York, having grown up and worked in this area of the country. We're hoping to relocate when we're both retired. For us, it's the weather, the chaos, the noise, and the yearning to be near nature and not within three feet of human beings. <laughs> That's right. In February 2020, we embarked on our journey to find that special place. We spent a week in Winter Park, Florida, which is beautiful, but something said it wasn't for us. As we were planning for the next trip, the pandemic arrived. Jean then gave birth. I gave birth? <laughs> to this podcast. With so many baby boomers retiring, many must be relocating. Why not connect with and learn from them? Here's a little background about us. I'm Asian, born in Brazil, and grew up in Flatbush, Brooklyn. I'm an engineer turned attorney turned podcaster. I recently retired from a university career practicing higher education law. I love the academic environment, but it was time to do something else. I no longer have to set an alarm, drive in BQE traffic, or work with people who don't always share the same principles. Oh, did I just say that? <laughs> you bet I did. I traded all that in to binge crime dramas into the wee hours just a little bit to develop the podcast, to volunteer, practice metal smithing, tackle our possessions. No regrets so far, Jane. I'm not Asian. And as Gil mentioned, I'm not retired. I'm just plain tired. Oh. Born and raised in Long Island, New York, a place I always wanted to leave. I'm a law librarian working in a court who loves his job, but we'll retire by the time we select our ideal location. We will be speaking to folks from across the street to across the globe who have moved to their dream venues and more. So please stay tuned. And remember, if you know anyone who has moved anywhere for retirement, let us know. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Today, we're chatting with Pepe Castro and Jean McNaney, who have retired to Lake Worth Beach and Jupiter, Florida, respectively. Our guests will explain that a little further. Lake Worth Beach, previously named Lake Worth, is a coastal city in the east central Palm Beach County, Florida area, located about 64 miles north of Miami. Population is about 42,000. Lake Worth Beach has great beaches, a new fishing pier, historic buildings, and a revitalized downtown with an eclectic mix of antique stores, lots of specialty shops, great restaurants, art galleries, music venues, and more. Lake Worth Beach is one of the most ethnically and racially diverse municipalities in Palm Beach County. Several cultural events are hosted annually in the city, including an incredible street painting festival, ethnic festivals, and Palm Beach Pride, one of the largest LGBTQ pride festivals in Florida. There are two interesting facts about the city. Most of the 1981 movie Body Heat was filmed in downtown Lake Worth Beach. Second thing, Batwell Road in Lake Worth Beach was named after a dairyman named William W. Batwell, who invented half and half. What do you think about that, Gil? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you wouldn't be able to drink your coffee without that. Uh, that's right. Good and bad, baby. I'm dying because of it. <laughs> <laughs> and now a little about our guests. Pepe Castro is considered to be one of the early pioneers of the psychedelic garage band rock era. He really has done it all. Pepe was born in Manhattan and raised in the Bronx. His father died when Pepe was just five months old. Oh, his musical journey began when he learned his first guitar chord as a result of being in a Christian church play at age 13. A year later, he left home and went to Greenwich Village, where he immersed himself in music and honed his guitar skills playing the clubs. His fame and first hit record began at the age of 17 as one of the founding fathers of the legendary rock group, the Blues Magoo. Their hit, We Ain't Got Nothing Yet, reached number five on the Billboard charts and put the band on the map. They appeared on the Jack Benny show and spent the summer of 67 on tour with Herman Hermits and The Who. Hey, Peppy, who was the headliner on that tour? Herman's Hermits. <laughs> That's amazing. And this, that was the tour that broke The Who in the United States. Wow. It was also on that tour, that tour 
was the first concert that Bruce Springsteen ever saw. Is that and, right? Yeah, yeah. And so when he saw that, and he saw the blues, blues, come on, we had electric suits. And then he saw the Who destroy their equipment. He said, I want to do that. That's who I want to be. I want to be a rock <laughs> star. He's in print and also some of his shows he's, where he said that. So, yeah, that's true. Wow. That, that, that tour was the first rock concert Springsteen ever saw. Many others, too. It was very crazy because we played nothing but Civic Auditorium all mm-hmm. across the United States. And Herman's Hermits, who I'm still very friendly with Peter Noon to this day. We're good sure, buddies. sure. Peter, he was the headliner because they had a ton of hits. 15,000 people would be moms and dads with their kids. And the other 15,000 would be hippie, crazy, whacked out, stoned out <laughs> to see the Who and the Magoos. It was, was kind of like Lake Worth. It was the most eclectic. <laughs> it was the most eclectic show you've ever seen in your oh life. God, that's really so wild. interesting. Oh okay. my god! Okay. okay, so the band broke up a few years later, but his rock and roll status led him to a starring role in the original Broadway production of Hair. There, he met twins Billy and Bobby Alessi, and they formed a band called Barnaby Bye in 1973. In Gene's opinion, their songs, especially "Tumbling In." should be played on Sirius XM's Yacht Rock channel, which, by the way, is Gillen's favorite channel. <laughs> by the way, the Lessie brothers went to my high school, not at the same time, but they did. They were legends at uh, West Hempstead High. Oh, wow. Get out. Amazing. Yeah. It's a wow. small world. A small world. <laughs> oh, it is. And by the way, Barnaby By has been inducted into the Long Island Music Hall of Fame. Peppy has also been a member of Balance and Wiggy Bits. Peppy's songs have been recorded by the likes of Diana Ross, Kiss, and Cher, among others. He's also Emmy-nominated and an award-winning playwright and multi-instrumentalist. For all Peppy has done, you may be most familiar with the hundreds of well-known jingles that he's penned and or performed for products made by Budweiser, Chevy, Bounty, Nestle, Kodak, just to name a few. Now we get HBO, to the- uh, Oh wow. my God, so many uh, CBS. Sports. What's one of the more famous ones? What's, uh, can you oh. name a jingle? Well, the quicker, thicker, thicker upper. <laughs> oh my God, that's oh, you? <laughs> oh, that's know, one of the it. big ones. <gasps> and then, oh, there's all this. Oh, yeah. Menin. By Menon. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Every weekend, I would sit and watch sports shows maybe 10, 15 years, and you would see, oh, it's CBS Sports, by Menon. You know, <laughs> the king. You know, oh, right, right. Like, oh, that's that's royalty every time. That's great. Oh, my God. Where's the ones with the football players? And the, um, oh, that's I, like, yeah, I had, that's the, Gi- I had the New York right. Giants come in. So Pepsi oh, Light. Oh, Gene. Oh, that's so that's I love one. that you love his jingles. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. 20 years. I did 20 years. I got vested in the Screen Actors Guild. Oh. Because all the commercials were considered film because they were mm. national TV. Over 20 years, I did everything from Bounty to Budweiser. You know? Oh, wow. That's so cool. That's yeah. great. Airlines, cars. Who, I mean, and then I could do things like, do you know who Phoebe Snow was? Sure, of oh, course, God, of course. Yeah. yeah, Phoebe was fabulous. But these artists sometimes would be starving. Their careers were so touted by everybody in the business, like, all my contemporaries love Phoebe because she's such a fabulous talent. But was she able to make a bucket load of money with her career? No, it was very hard. And she had a child who was like Margaret Kalichik or something. It was really tough on her. The child died. Then Phoebe died. But Phoebe used to call me up and say, Peppy, can you help me out? You, you know, so I would throw her commercials, you know. Oh, she, that's sang, great. Uh, she sang um, a Kodak commercial for me. Oh, wow. Where I had Phoebe, Mark Cohen, uh, Martha Washington from the Weather the Girls. She was the one who said, everybody dances. Oh, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that, that song. That was Martha Washington. <laughs> yeah. and, that. and so, yeah. So I would get all these people <laughs> in the studio and I would throw them jobs all, all the way down the line. But that was the nice part, being able to just bail some friends out and do that. And Phoebe did a safeguard, the ones you love. You know, safeguard soap. I mean, oh, well, Peppy, <laughs> if you know of anyone who needs like voiceover, <laughs> okay, I'm here for you. Too. I'm here for you. Like the show says, I retired. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Okay. Quite a while ago, I took an early retirement, but you know, it never ends. I'm, it never I've ends. Worked. You know what? Yeah. I, I, I took work more than I've ever had now. Yeah, I took it's, early retirement. I have no time now, thanks to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have no <laughs> idea how much work is involved. <laughs> hey, Jeannie, my better half over here, she has something called Opera Pals. Yeah, I'm coming up yeah, to we're that. Coming I'm to coming that. up to that. It's like amazing. We're talking to the Chinese factories all the time in China. Yeah. So now we have the better half. Jean <laughs> McNanny was born in the Bronx, New York, and later moved to Greenwich, Connecticut, and is currently living in Jupiter, Florida. She graduated magna cum laude from Mercy College with a bachelor's degree in veterinary technology and behavioral science. Oh, my God. She's got a lot over you, Peppy. Okay. She has dedicated. <laughs> she has dedicated her professional life to causes that enhance the lives of children and their families all over the world. She's written two children's books with environmental preservation as the theme. They are The Legend of Honey Hollow and Miracle of Sumatra, the story of Gutsy Gus. She now has embarked on a groundbreaking line of plush toys called Opera Pals. Oh my God, it's so cute with state of the art Bluetooth technology. In this endeavor, she enlisted the aid of a Dr. Ken Howard of Australia, one of the world's leading toy designers. He's been able to design a copyrighted and patentable sound module with chip and software and firmware exclusively for Opera Pals. That is so cool. And we'd love to hear about that in a moment. Jean? All right. Now about the couple. Peppy has one son and Jean has two daughters and a son. Peppy and Gina are both widowed, and they met through Ace Freely. Yes, the Ace Freely, who's the original guitarist of Kiss. Amazing. It turns out that make Peppy... Stuff up. Huh? Sorry, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it turns out that Peppy inspired and taught Ace how to play guitar. Ace is great. In my opinion, Gene Simmons should really that Ace on the Kiss tour. I mean, let him have some of that concert cash. It's really ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> uh, after all, I was a founding member. However, I do have one bone to pick with Ace. My name, my name, unfortunately, is Eugene, and Ace co-wrote a song called Eugene, performed by Crazy Joe and the Vario Speed Band, making fun of a guy named Eugene. Aww. The song was the bane of my existence during my senior year in high school. Aww. Anyway. I'm sorry, sorry. Anyway, if I ever met him. Dylan, <laughs> did you know this? Yes. No, no, it's I was, I was into disco. <laughs> <laughs> and I was into punk, actually. But anyway names for everybody so you might just as well be dylan no yeah. no, no. I, I like the name dylan actually <laughs> you know dylan's candy stores I'm, she's my I'm, ears i'm honeymoon so oh okay honeymoon. Honeymoon? Yeah. oh that's great even though peppy spends most of his time in florida he has a home built in 1760 in new york he's selling his one-bedroom condo in lake worth beach but don't worry about him he purchased a two-bedroom condo in the same building pretty smooth <laughs> peppy we're talking to you from it now Oh, okay. This is the two bedroom. We got a few gold records up there on the wall. You, you guys can see it. Wow. Oh, gold Just records. Wow. All right. I, I am more in New York. Okay. That's but, Alice Cooper. We've got uh, Peter yeah. Townsend. Peter Townsend. Yeah. And then Peter Noon over there. Peter Noon over there. Joan Jett. Another we've one. Got Joan Jett. Wow. We got, Peter Noon and the Harmon's Hermits. Yeah, yeah we, sure. got, we, got, we got stuff all over this place. Oh, my God. You are making Gene here so nervous. You're He's going to faint. So, on this episode of Retire There for the first time, We'll be telling you about a condo for sale. So, Peppy and Jean, welcome to Retire There. What brought you both to Florida? Water. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love. you know, there's something about sitting on a beach and being near water that's tranquil and calming. I've had tinnitus since the 70s. Oh, right? so, wow. Uh, Is that from the music? Oh, yeah. See, those headphones, imagine those cranked up all day long, listening to tons and tons of uh, um, music. Mm -hmm. When I sit on a beach... And I hear the ocean and my eyes can look out in, into infinite space. There's something so calming about it that I've always gravitated and I've always loved it. And I've always loved the tropics. And after being a born and raised New Yorker, I've had enough winters. It was like, you know, so seven years ago, I bought this little apartment down here without ever even seeing the apartment. <laughs> what I, I saw it. was on Zillow was the condo pool built out right on to the edge of the intracoastal. Oh. And it looked like a five-star resort. And I was like, oh my God, 
For the money they were asking at the time, I, I, I couldn't even imagine how I could ever find that anywhere else. I asked a friend to come look at it. She said, the place is clean. She goes, this is amazing. I've never seen a pool like this in, a, in any setting like this, other than in a four or five star hotel. She said, it, it's fabulous. Then I asked a friend who was a banker down here and she said, Peppy, you can't get a parking spot on the water in Palm Beach County for what you're paying for the condo. I jumped on it. And then, you know, I would come down two weeks. I'd fly into Fort Lauderdale, rent a car, go back up to my house, work on my house, come down again in, in two few weeks. This went on for a while. Then I said, this is silly. Let me take one of my cars down here. And then I found out that West Palm Beach, uh, Palm Beach International Airport is 13 miles from my house wow. instead of 45 minutes from mm-hmm. Fort Lauderdale. And I started flying into there. And I just I was like, oh, my God, this is the best kept secret on earth. And so uh, I picked up friends today. My friends bought a castle 10 minutes from 10 blocks from here called the Lakeside Castle. I have a studio in there. I have a bedroom in there. They are like really, really dear friends of mine. They came down here and saw my place and saw that for sale. And they were like, you're down here. They bought this castle built in 1920, which is magnificent. It's called the Lakeside Castle. You can Google that. You won't believe it. So I have friends now that moved down here. And then I just started now, I, I haven't been home up to my house and trees hit it the other day with all the storms in New York. Yeah, sure, so sure. Now, I, now I have to have all this damage replaced up there and stuff like that. But the house is fabulous because it's built in 1760. It's 246 years old. It's oh got a God. five and a half. There's not a level floor in the place. You know, <laughs> nothing is cookie cutter. It's great. And I still love it. I can't wait to get Jeannie up there. She hasn't seen it yet. Because we're like nine months in as a relationship, which is mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. But we're both widowed. <laughs> okay. And we met through Ace in the lobby of the hotel because he kept calling me up saying, come on, I want to see you. You know, he played in West Palm Beach opening up for Alice Cooper. So it was oh, wow. Alice, Ace Freely, Alice Cooper. And he said, hey, I'm going to be down there. Come on and meet me. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I said, you know what? I should. I really should. Because, well, my laundry list when I hit 70 was I wanted to do something with him 55 years later. I'm in his book. He tells people about that I'm his inspiration and stuff. And so lo and behold, I go there. Jeannie's sitting there talking to him. She can tell you her story. I don't, I don't know. It's a, yeah, you know, Jean. Her, her husband Jean, passed away. You're, you're with these people too, all these musicians, huh? I don't, yeah. I, I don't know really how that worked out the way it did, but I think it's because of sobriety. A lot of musicians are sober. My husband, Joe, passed away in 2016. I He had moved down to Florida in 2014, so it was a little challenging for me the past few years with three children together. Peppy has a son as well who suffers suffers with addiction and uh, my I have people in my family that suffer from addictions but I've been sober uh, actually tomorrow is the 26th of May it'll be it's her anniversary 30, 1989 yeah. wow. how many years that is I'm not- wow congratulations well long, Amazing. long story short if I may Ace has notoriously had an up and down career with substance abuse right 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 he met her husband oh. in rehab. They became fast friends. And so that's where her friendship started with Ace. Her husband passed away and Ace kept up a friendship. Well, yeah. That's okay. a nice story. And then you that's swooped in. <laughs> swooped in to him. You swooped in. All right, baby. <laughs> I just instantly knew that this my was lucky my day. soulmate. I don't know how. But ah, that's a great story. Because I've never, ever seen anybody that <laughs> He was him my whole life. And it's funny, we met that night at the Hilton Hotel out by Palm Beach International Airport uh-huh. with Ace and everything. We gave each other a hug. And the minute she hugged me, the only thought I had in my head was like, oh my God, she knows what I know. <laughs> I didn't know anything else. I didn't go like, oh, she feels great. Oh, wow. This woman's real. I just said, oh my God, she knows what I know. It was like the most incredible transference. And I didn't know half of the stuff about her background or mm-hmm. anything. Nothing. All that stuff. I just instantly felt that she knows what I know. And it's, the next thing out of your mouth is, oh, I go to Al-Anon. I'm like, how does he know that I'm an Al-Anon, you know, for support? And it's like, it was like, we just knew. That it's been, it's been it instant like a, 
since, and, and I got to say, past it, life stuff. Uh, and I was married for 18 years and I love my wife and, you know, God rest her soul. She died from ovarian cancer. This is the best relationship I've ever had. Aww. Probably in my life, you know. Wow. Oh, I, I'm going to cry. And that's why I call her honeymoon. A I never her ending, a never ending honeymoon. Valve, it's my safety valve not to be complacent. And okay. just always keep that honeymoon fresh with us. So, so I have a, a question about something you said, Peppy, and that is you have tinnitus, which I have as well, and it's horrible. But when you're at the beach, does it kind of subside? Do, do the waves take over? No, it's like anything. It masks it. Uh, it masks it because, well, for me, it masks it. I mean, I slept for years with noise machines and the waves yeah, and yeah. oceans and rain and all that kind of stuff. And then after 45, 50 years of the stuff, I just said, I can't wear a hearing aid because it makes it worse. Yeah. Because it's an amplified it's loud. signal. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just like a normal signal like you're hearing now or you're hearing so. Right, you hear like oh, scratchy I mean, and it's just it. this tinny yeah. loud thing in your ear. And when I take them off, it's I just know. brutal. So yeah. I don't have that. She's much better than lip reading because if I can't hear anything, <laughs> I go, honey, what's the deal? And yeah. she'll tell me what it is. And she's got wonderful patients. She never mm-hmm. gets angry at it or something, mm-hmm. yeah. which is great. I find that the ocean or just being by water yeah. and looking out over water gives me a sense of calm because yeah. there's nothing there's nothing blocking it. It's like even if we walk out right, right behind that wall out there is a huge swimming pool. Right in front of the swimming pool is our seawall mm-hmm. into a very wide, wide intracoastal. And on the other side of the intracoastal is South Palm Beach. So, and the ocean is right on the other side of that. I keep a permit in my car. It takes me five minutes to go on the beach. I can drive there, park mm-hmm. anywhere I want. I sit on the beach. I can walk the beach, eat, get exercise. Mm-hmm. I take lyrics and a pen and a paper. I put my music on. If I write something the night before, and I'll go there and write music and write lyrics to myself and then figure if it's good, I'll remember it when I come home. If I don't remember when I come home, it that doesn't pass the smell test. And I say, well, then I guess it's not good because I'm not remembering it. Right, right. But then I can come back in there. But water calms me to no end. I love water. Yeah. And the so- fact that my eye can travel and just see into space is something very ethereal. Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. So, so Jean, how did you wind up in Jupiter? And where were you before? Well, we were in Old Greenwich, Connecticut. We moved in 2014 in August um, because um, my husband, Joe, had got offered a, a job down in West Palm Beach to be CEO of an alternate energy company. And he had 10 good years of so- sobriety, then he relapsed in 2012. So it was like up and down, but he still was sober when we moved down. And it was just... Um, time to, to make a move. And I just felt the kids were really, they love the ocean. My son is quite certified in scuba at age 12. Lifestyle down here is so remarkable. There's the good element and there's the bad element. So, I mean, now. yeah, it sounds like both of you love the beach, you love the water, but oh, there's yeah. so many other places and some places even less humid. Is it humid where you are? I mean, couldn't, was North Carolina an idea or, or it's what? South did you... Florida, of course it's humid. <laughs> Not for me. You know, the other thing is my house is a mini estate in New York. I've got a guest house. I've got a caretaker, all this kind of stuff. I've got a big studio, recording studio there. I put a steam room in, jacuzzi. Oh, my goodness. It's it's the antidote to civilization of Manhattan. You know, I I tell my friends, hey, come on up, spend a weekend, take a steam, relax, you know, sit out here. It's like when the power goes out up there. I'm singing like Kumbaya because it's like, <laughs> it's so old. The place is so old. When you don't hear even an electric meter or nothing going, you sit there and you go, oh my God, they were here. They were like <laughs> downstairs in the slate stone basement cooking in the winters. They were shooting the mini sink Indians out of these little eyebrow colonial windows. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's got a vibe and a half, but a little one bedroom didn't bother me because the minute I leave that apartment, I go outside. I'm in this outdoor tropics environment to where I'm in shorts and flip flops 24 mm-hmm. seven around. You can tell the New Yorkers down here. We're the ones in 65 degrees, just in shorts and flip flops. And the <laughs> Floridians are like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like freezing from yeah. one of them, yeah. you know. Yeah. But the climate is 
so conducive to just being more alive, more, mm-hmm. more, you do more, you're more physical, you're out more. It's like an outdoor right. environment. In New York, and when I go back to New York, I gain weight, <laughs> you know, you know, or winter and I sit there and stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. I try, but I come down here and boom, I lose it. I jump in the pool. Uh, yeah, low yeah. impact aerobics mm-hmm. doesn't hurt mm-hmm. my back because right. I had a back operation 30 years ago. All the little aches and pains that we get now that we're retired, you know, <laughs> all that stuff. Oh, yeah. I don't know what you're talking she's about. Not, she's retired, I'm but she's not retirement she's, she's, age. She hasn't, she hasn't hit yet. the magic. <laughs> <laughs> We're just getting started. That's Me- what Medicare you know. hasn't hit her yet. She ha- ARP, <laughs> ARP hasn't hit her yet. <laughs> ARP no. starts at 50. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so you moved to Florida. How's what's the cost of living like? Give our audience an idea of what prices are. Well, the difference is now Florida being a free state in a woke society has meant that you have Californians are coming down here in droves. You got New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, California influx like you can't believe because God's not making anymore and you have the water. The price is here. When I got in, it was like, it's the best kept secret on earth. Lake Worst was the best kept secret because you see what you read. I don't know where you got the diversity thing. I'm pretty conservative, very logical, but I'm also very Mm open-minded and I'm a very free thinker and I'm a very liberal person. I have spiritual base. I believe in certain things. I believe in law and order. I mean, all the, I let logic dictate, but I also grew up in the arts. So, you know, (laughs) do I have tons of gay friends? Yes. Do I have tons of musicians from all colors? of the world because that's our language. I don't have to speak Chinese. If I sit down with a, with a Chinese musician, we can sit and speak to each other for hours and hours, yeah, just yeah. plain. Yeah. So it, it opens language. the whole thing. Yeah. My first breakfast in Lake Worth was at a little place called the Pelican, which is a little shack that opens up just for breakfast and lunch. I went there on a Sunday morning, and this is maybe eight years ago. And I'm going, oh, I want to try this place out. Oh, my God, it's adorable. It looks like a little Key West shack. Mm-hmm. I went in there. There was a Palm Beach Porsche outside. Okay. Oh, my goodness. There were some guys in golfing seersucker Palm Beach. Mm-hmm. There was a trans transvestite in there. Mm-hmm. There were guys with earrings and nose rings and everything. And I was like, whoa. I was like, this <laughs> so place like, is oh, back in this New York. place is the East Village meets Palm Beach meets Key West. <laughs> oh, he left, he left one thing out, the um bar scene from Star Wars. Oh yeah, the bar scene. It, it's yeah, it, it, <laughs> the original Star Wars. It is oh, yeah. really one of the most. It is really one of the most eclectic, eclectic. crazy places you've ever wow. seen. Wow! Wow! And it's been discovered now. So the cost of living in Florida now is through the roof. Okay, just like everywhere else. You're talking about housing, Housing, housing rents. Well, now everything, the guests just want to So forget. everything's relative, right? And we try right. to try to get our guests to like focus down to numbers and don't compare to New York. So can you get lunch for under $20 per person? Yes, yes. Okay. Without a doubt. And can you... And it's so eclectic. I haven't taken it to this place yet called Don Victorios, but it's like a Guatemalan greenery fruit and vegetable place. Okay. Where you can go and get really rare herbs and really off the chart stuff that you don't want to find in Publix or ShopRite or things like that. And they're reasonable. And it's mm-hmm. like anything, if you know where to go and once you get in sure. to the, once you become a native, okay, where is this? You know where mm-hmm. that, you mm-hmm. know, you go through a few electricians, you go through a few of this until you right. find one that's a gem. And I said, but that's like anywhere. You and know? do you think we can pay for a two bedroom under 500 nowadays? Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. But well, what do you tell people you okay. sell them your one bedroom for? I'm listing it for 150. Oh, what it, is it? One it, bedroom, one bath? I'm listing it for 150. It's in 55 and older community. You have to own it for two years before you can lease it out. Number one, there's tons of closet space in this thing. And this building was designed architecturally from a very famous architect in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, a guy named Marcel Bria, I believe. Oh, my God. A mid-century Marcel Bria? Yes, yes, you, yes. Do you know who he is? He's in the Bauhaus School of Art. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. See, that's him. Yeah. This wow. unit, it's where I think two buildings with 70 apartments in each building or 71 apartments in each building. We are on the water. So all the neighbors are all million dollar homes. Wow. Which is crazy. Whereas my friends just bought the Lakeside Castle 10 blocks down and they got it for a song. It's tripled since they've owned it in two and a half years. Yeah. Well, prices have gone crazy. Yeah. There. yeah. Reasonably, you can eat high end. Mm-hmm. Or you can eat. Uh, there was a uh, this chef Guy Vieri. Guy Vieri, yeah, mm-hmm. he's from down okay. there, right? He just bought a four million dollar place on the water down here, and he's donated money to the local Lake Worth High School. And all his chef buddies are following him down. Oh wow, uh, nice! It's been discovered. Yeah. Does your apartment come with parking? Yes, it comes with parking. You get the pool. The maintenance is three seventy a month, which has just gone up. And the building is now being, uh, because of that building collapse in Miami, Sure, we're building the seawall up three feet higher. Even though it's been here since the 70s, we've never been hit, hit with a hurricane or nobody's been flooded out and stuff like that. It's a fabulous little place. I was like, oh, 55 and older. I was like, you know, I had all this mental baggage, you know. <laughs> From being a musician and like, oh, I want to bring my girlfriends into a 55. Oh, my God. (laughs) A friend of mine, Teresa, who's an actress model, she called me up one night. She said, I don't want to hear it. Just do it. Go there. Get into the climate. Get into the area. Just buy yourself something. Because she knew me and my wife. And she knew that it was my wife's dream to have a place down here. I spent my wife's ashes right outside in front of the condo. I rented a boat, took my son down here and some friends, and we played Spirit in the Sky, which was her last wish, and I spread her ashes right in front. Oh, that's great. The vibe is here. I love Florida. I love Lake Worth. I I really do. Genie's in Jupiter. It's more upscale. That's what Burr Reynolds is from. I like Jupiter for her, but this place is changing. They're still putting a lid on it. Well, Jupiter's trying to be more upscale, we should say. Because there's still a lot of, you know, middle class things being driven, being driven out, you know, and it's a, it's a kind of sad situation, you know, what's going on, people not being able to afford the rents. And well, it became a huge sports hall. Only the rich people can afford it now. And oh, wow. I'm not in that category yet, but I hopefully will be. <laughs> Opera Pals, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Opera Pals is a trip. I got sucked in and now, and now it's like, it's, we're all in, we're, we're great. Say somebody wants to see your apartment. It can, is there somebody they can go to or call or write to? I just completed the floor today. I put in the uh, uh, vinyl laminate uh, waterproof flooring. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So it did have carpet. I took the carpet out. That's done. All I did was listen on my Facebook page to give my friends an opt if somebody wanted to come down here and do that. Uh-huh. People mentioned it and stuff like that. But now within the next week, I'm probably going to go on, I guess, for sale by owner, maybe, and, and stuff. The new floor is in, so it's going to look different. So I'll take new pictures. But anybody can email me. Okay. You, if they're in. So we can give out your email address on the show? Yes, okay. absolutely. P-E-P-P-Y, the letter C, Peppy C, mm-hmm. at O-P-T, online.net. I'm looking at her. The agent told me, you know, I'll list it for 150 Now that I put a new floor in, she goes, you may want to list a little more. I think the bubble's just starting to burst now a little bit because of mm-hmm. inflation. I think prices have come down maybe 10%. But- and is the uh, maintenance, the maintenance is 375 you said? That's the HOA? Three seventy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's also in Lake Worth Beach, right? It's right yes, by it's you. Lake Worth okay. Beach. It's okay. on the water. On the water. I mean, you step out your door. Boom. Oh, right. You're, You're in the same building. Okay. Yes. Yes. I, I bought four doors down. Any yeah. concerns about, I guess, floods or anything like that? Well, or... I don't know because okay. I mean, well, first of all, my son's in a rehab mm-hmm. for a year program, and he suffered from addiction. It, Mom suffered, you know, uh, his grandmother on my mom's, on his mom's side suffered and, and all this kind of stuff. He finally went into a program because all his friends were dying of fentanyl. Um, uh, fentanyl, oh my goodness. Oh. Drugs are everywhere. That's yeah. yeah. And yeah. Florida is a transient environment. Mm-hmm. But you don't see homeless people all over the street. Mm-hmm. We're not a San Francisco. We're not a New York. They protected all the elderly down here. I went and shot a video on myself and a song I have up on YouTube. It was in the beginning of COVID. And I loved it because it was like a ghost town. Nobody was in the street. Oh, I yeah. got out there with my camera. I filmed myself. There was no cars. There was no people. It was like a ghost town in the very beginning. I was able to film myself all over town. No mask. Oh, I did put a mask on it because it's called... Uh, um, 
I don't know why people don't see eye to eye. Oh, ah, with, with about I like it. You can actually find it on YouTube. If that's okay. Easy. So tell but, us, in terms of healthcare, where is your nearest physician? Did, was it difficult to get one? Was there a line? No, my attention to detail on that was very lax of days because I was always going back to New York. So I had my primary care. I had my cardiologist there and everything. I did get a cardiologist down here, but all the cardiologists want to do is put me on statins. As far as <laughs> medical goes down here, you're talking God's waiting. There's nothing but meds down here. If you're in the medical community, you're going to work for the rest of your life. There's yeah. no two ways about it. I don't yeah. care whether you're a, you're a physician's assistant, you give massages, anything. They're all over the place. And they have the ur- urgent care places down. It's just right. amazing. Yeah. And if you yeah. have the money, you can do the concierge services. <laughs> right. There's a lot of holistic. A right. lot of- I know some friends that have that. Yeah. Good, uh, Tons of DOs down here, er- er- everything. So there's it's here. The only difference is now... Because of the influx of people, as a new patient, you're going to wait. Mm -hmm. I signed up for a new physician. I can't see her until August. Wow. But I want her because she's like the best of the best. The the accolades on this woman is like so amazing. Wow. That's why she's back up until August. So I said, okay, I'll wait. I'll go to urgent care between now and then. Yeah. And fill out the portal, but she'll be my primary care as of August. Well, that's good. So yeah, you're not going to be without medical attention. Right. Okay. Chiropractics thrive. She's the holistic queen. It's my passion is to learn about health. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Three kids and no husband. So I needed to stick around. (laughs) I couldn't afford to get uh, sick. And I did actually get sick, but I I, I healed. I got, I healed myself because of holistic medicine. Absolutely. I believe in Western medicine. Absolutely. Surgeries and medications can save lives. But for us, we're both so sensitive that they don't work well for us. Bottom line is Florida has soup to nuts because, you know, there's such an elderly population down here. Right. And that's really changing. Really changing. I have a question about Lake Worth Beach. I was reading some areas of of the town have some crime. What what do you say about that? Well, first of all, when I was looking in Florida, I didn't want to look above Delray Beach because I figured Delray, okay, it's a great little town. I've been there. It's nice. It's upscale. It's hip. I'm close to Boca. I'm close to Fort Lauderdale. I can get down to Miami, all that kind of stuff. And I went looking in Delray and there really wasn't anything available that I could afford. So it wasn't until I saw on Zillow this place and I saw the photo of that big beautiful pool outside on the water i was like oh my god i jumped on it and then i started to learn about lake worth because the crime issue with lake worth well first of all there's crime all of florida but it's still you're talking sure, about sure. break-ins car break-ins mm-hmm. when we don't have our mass murders going on down here thank god mm-hmm. yet there was one somewhere a gay club or something years ago that happened you know i maybe i heard of one murder in the last two years it's all relative you sure, know sure it's certainly not anything like philly chicago or all those other cities that mm-hmm. you know not even close but what happened was when i moved here there was a separate police force for lake worth beach they were their own little police mm-hmm. force the crime i heard was bad there's a lot of drugs yeah there's a two block two three blocks up if i want to get drugs i can get drugs there's the haves and the have-nots for mm-hmm. sure the police presence down here is pretty damn good it's not like other places this place is like highly law enforcement supportive all that kind of stuff and yet it's the most eclectic liberal little city around our sheriff's department guy i don't know how he's still on the job he looks like he's 80 years old (laughs) he's in town all day long i see him he hangs out in the pizza store he can hardly get down the block (laughs) and and they still keep him on the job and i don't think nobody wants to screw with this guy because they know him for 40 years you got a lot of drunks. You got a lot of people who smoke. They all sit outside the bars. And I go like, oh, my God, how can these people do this? Mm-hmm. But then there's other places you can go. I can go to the beach and yeah. I can sit and I can get the fresh air. Or I can go to other restaurants where I just sit outside and it's just beautiful and it's nice. They got rid of the little incorporated police force and the sheriff's department came in and took over the whole thing for Lake Worth Beach. The crime has come way, way, way down ever since the sheriff's department has come in. They're bigger. They have more money. They have more muscle, more everything mm-hmm. like this. And because this is a little upscale area, they don't profile, but they stop people. But it's really relevant. Yeah, it, yeah. It, mm-hmm. And we have so many community-based online programs 
Lake Worth Beach. I'm on like 10 of them almost, you know. They <laughs> sell things, they're citizens. So every day I'll get, uh, somebody in a gray car was driving around my house till, till uh, <laughs> three o'clock. <laughs> Anybody see this guy? He looks kind of suspicious. Everybody's really looking out for themselves here. Uh-huh. There's community and watch programs. Right. They're protecting their properties. They're, so they're little historic districts and everything's getting gentrified. So you can know? you walk from your complex or building to coffee shop or do you have to drive? I mean, I could if I want to go for a a good walk. I don't. But I mean, like I, you know, close by. Is there something oh, close? I by? can walk. Yeah, I can walk. Little cute little common, the common grounds common ground is really under a half, a, a, a half a mile. Maybe Shopping a everywhere. Town is a mile, but Lantana Town is closer. I'm at the edge of Lake Worth, and Lantana butts it up. Okay. You know, where do you go part. food shopping? Where do you get your groceries? Well, I go. I go all different places. I go Publix, Winn Dixie, mm, uh, Walmart, yeah. Trader Joe's. Mm, uh, my um, favorite. What's the big one? The, um, the Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Yeah. Yeah. So you find out where everything is, mm-hmm. and you can go high end food or it's the basics. She's great because mm-hmm. she's adventurous like what I am. So mm-hmm. she's like, honey, let's go into like little Guatemala area and go into the hole in the wall. And see what, like, the mom and pop Guatemalans. Yeah, yeah, that's the way to go. It's wholesome and it's not as expensive. Food from the real real distributors. Yeah. No brainer for under $20. There you go. (laughs) Wow. She's she's like that. Good for you, man. Go to Guatemala because we can just go to the restaurant. Oh, no, you can get chef salads and pop salads, 14, 15 bucks. They have a chain down here called Two, T O O J's, Two J's. Mm. And they're all over this part of Florida, West Palm here, and stuff like that. I swear. They are a New York deli only bet. Oh. oh, wow. And you can get Dr. Brown's. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Black cherry and Black cherry. fruit soda. Yeah, yeah, then we've got that. another little cafe we love called Nature's Way Cafe. Mm-hmm. And everything's protein shakes, smoothies, things, fresh salads. Fresh oh, things. great. And even that, they've had to raise their price. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. had to raise it. I'm going in and I'm getting a veggie wrap on spinach wrap <laughs> melt for eight bucks. It's still more than reasonable. And I'll get it and I'll go to the beach and I'll eat half and then take half out. Or we'll split. Half. It's okay. just nice. And New York is two and a half hours away. Yeah. So the airport you said is about 13 miles, right? What what airport is that? West Palm. Yeah. Okay. Palm Beach. Palm Beach. Yeah. Okay. Palm. That's great. Yeah. It's so, nice so you have Delray Beach, which is 15 minutes below us. Literally, if somebody called me right now and says, hey, man, can you meet me at Delray Beach? If I jump in my car right now, I can meet him in 15 minutes. But if I want to meet someone, and she's my best friend, so then. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh my right? God. I wish the audience so, could see these two. All so right. She's honeymoon. All right. All right. All right. Listen, uh, we can't be showing this. Oh, we're not showing it. Okay. We're not showing it. That's, that's right. right. That's right. That's why but I'm the two it. of us are watching you. So behave. Okay. But if I want to meet somebody in 15 minutes in Manhattan and I'm on 83rd Street, good, good luck. Yeah. I'm lucky yeah. if I can get down to 57th from 83rd Street, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. and who yeah. wants to get on a train anymore? Oh, please. Oh, that's so it's, scary. It's the horrible. recent the recent uh um, so you know so yes the recent Florida killings is, if okay. anybody can afford florida that's why they're coming down here and i had a friend she just bought an apartment in brooklyn for her son a studio mm-hmm. three hundred fifty thousand bucks. yeah yeah, yeah. brooklyn's yeah. crazy that's the going rate baby and so we're gonna sell yeah. a lease and, and uh, i was like <laughs> and i was like geez for hundred and fifty thousand, they come down here they'll get five closets they'll do this <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to worry about we, the maintenance will be 370 bucks. They can go outside and go swimming whenever they want. And somebody else yes. takes care of the pool and somebody else takes care of the landscaping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can go to the beach whenever you want. And in 15 minutes, you're in West Palm Beach and 25 minutes, you're in Jupiter and 15 minutes, you're in Delray, 25 minutes, you're in Boca, 40 minutes, you're in uh, 45, you're in Fort Lauderdale, even yeah. in. Yeah. My house from Manhattan is 62 miles from the Lincoln Tunnel to my garage door, right? On a good day, I'm lucky if I can make it in an hour and 15 with no track traffic at four o'clock in the morning. If I come around the George Washington Bridge, it's 76 miles, and that's going to take me an hour and 40. I can go to Miami in 67 minutes if I pick my time. Or you can live in Bay Ridge and get to JFK International in 20 minutes. (laughs) Yeah, take the belt if you you can. If if the belt isn't crazy. We've been lucky. We've been lucky. But how, 
the traffic isn't bad going to Miami? You got to pick your hours like anything else. Okay. You know, okay. But they give you these express lanes. You know, uh, you pay 25 nice. cents, 30 them. cents here. This cent. You get on these things and you fly and everybody else is sitting in traffic and you go like, this is not such a bad deal. You, you don't know? have to have three people in the car? I think just two. Two. No, no. You, no, not the express lanes because these are separate express lanes specifically for 95. Right. You need, when the normal, there are normal express lanes where you don't have to pay. It's like the HOV lanes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those lanes you need two people in in the business hours from seven to nine, and then maybe from four to seven. Right. Okay. And if you're a single person in that lane, you're going to get pulled over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The difference see. is the ticket may be 65 bucks and not 250. Okay. That's the difference down here. Wow. It's why everybody wants to be here. I know, I know. Don't keep talking about it. All right? <laughs> no, why don't you guys buy the condo? Well, we're gonna be we're gonna be checking out a lot of places, and uh, yeah, we're, gonna we're gonna be gonna figure out where we're gonna go. We have to figure out. We've decided that we need a base home in the U.S. And then we're going to travel abroad and then we're going to stalk our son, you know, wherever he goes, uh, we might be like nearby. We'll say, <laughs> hey, what a coincidence. You live here, too. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we're <laughs> one of one of my criteria is to be within about 20 minutes of an international airport because I hate driving and I hate sitting in airports. That's my only thing. And I think you guys hit gold. Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to Cancun. Next week, I'll fly out of Fort Lauderdale uh, mm-hmm. because it's easier. The price is easier than more flights in this direct. So I can do that. West Palm, PBI, the New York hub, West Palm, JetBlue, yeah. two and a half hours. I can leave New York City, take a JetBlue flight down here and be on the ocean quicker than it takes me to drive out to Montauk. Wow. 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 And oh, yeah. You'd have to the sit Montauk back for drive. three hours. <laughs> You have to pay through the nose for a flea bag for a week on the beach and you have to fight to get in a restaurant in the summer. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. All right. Okay. Well, I think we've covered Lake Fourth Beach. Have we not given this place an amazing testimonial? Oh, man, have you? <laughs> we will make sure that we note all this information in the show notes for our audience. Yes. And by the way, you know, we're on Instagram. So I hope that you guys send us photos of. Oh, he sent oh, a few. Right. She, right. She, she's on it. I, I'm. I can barely just keep up with Facebook. Yeah, no, 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 no. Well, Instagram is good. Well, well, Gene, we want a picture of the two oh, of you also. The two of you and the locale and places no, that I'm, you enjoy. I, we're the we're pool. nine months in and my publicist friend said she'd been married 45 years. She was peppy. Mm-hmm. I've seen more pictures of you and Jeannie in nine months than I have in 45 years of being married. <laughs> 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 we, have, All right. we have a lot of photos, that's for sure. All right. Oh, and Jeannie, we want to hear about Opera Pal. So what exactly is this toy and its functionality? Could you tell, tell us. Show my opera. Well, it's a concept I came up with and I actually trademarked in 2003 in between my second and third child, Lindsay and Brendan, because I had a really good friend who was an opera singer named Ping Yu. He was a a baritone from China. He was just a very unusual human being because he was so warm and loving and he he was an acupuncturist. He was a doctor of acupuncture in China. Had the inspiration for that, as well as my children, my, ch- my daughter Kaylee loved the Magic Flute by Mozart, uh, opera. They had a little children's play that we watch on video. I was like, wow, you know, why are there not like high end toys? <gasps> oh, oh, so cute. That's so cute. Send us a picture of that too. That's yeah. Baritone. That's one of them. There's a char- four characters with each okay. vocal range of, um, you know, baritone, soprano, oh. and oh. and, This uh, is. Bass. The first prototype from China, from a factory in China, is the, the brochure on the back story. Very nice. So they sing? They sing? Yes. Well, here's the baritone, what he's loaded with, the areas. This is the user manual. This baritone, is total, get it, B-E-A-R. This is I like that one. <laughs> this doll has Bluetooth in it. Ah, Technology. wow. So literally, you can play what's programmed in there, uh-huh. but you turn the Bluetooth on, Shows up in your app, you link on with your phone, and you can play any song you want through the doll. You can also play phone calls from grandma <laughs> who can That's call so cool. anywhere in the world and talk and put the child to sleep. Oh. Good night. And this yeah. and it's got an automatic shut off. So oh, it nice. goes when to you sleep out. With yeah. favorite songs. Mm-hmm. Here sure. Now we have a Zoom 
a meeting Friday morning mm -hmm. with my partner, who is the, a big, 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 big shot. Who mm -hmm. is How big is he? One the, yeah. <laughs> one of the producers of Warhol. Mm. He has a company called Metaflix. And he, we're going to take this technology uh, and try and build it in for Alzheimer's patients. Oh, oh wow. Nice. Very That's nice. a great yeah. idea. You can load up in a pillow, for instance, all the voices of the person's family, memorizing things. Hi, dad. This yeah. is me, oh. Gina, your son, oh, your, your daughter, you know, all this kind of stuff. So we're getting into some groundbreaking stuff here. So yeah. we're, we've got a thing going on Friday morning with Australia, the designer. So it's kind of, it, it's, this is what I say, our liaison, you know, I met Jeannie and she had this and then all of a sudden getting it started and then yeah, he came cool. into my life and he's magically musical. I call him yeah. Merlin. Or <laughs> so I started doing, so I started doing music for it and started making presentations and writing mm -hmm. songs, uh, intro songs for the dolls and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I showed it to my partner, the partners, the producers of Wall. They flipped out over it and they loved it. And then he said, let me ask you about this technology. They are, are you ready for this? They have David Foster. Do you know David Foster? Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Sure. I mean, David, David Foster. Yeah, I know. David Foster is like as big as they come. He's yep. commissioned already to do music uh, for this medical thing. Really? And they're going to put it in dog and cats. And so he <laughs> said, can you really do this technology? I said, yeah, we know it. I'll demo it for you. I'll show you those. Are you kidding? You know, he goes, can we talk to Ken Howard, the designer who she hired, she uh -huh. commissioned to. Uh -huh. She had him design the stuff. It's all patent and trademark now for opera bounce and stuff. He said, I'd like to see if we can do this for Alzheimer's patients. Okay. And, and, and maybe ah! he'll bring in uh, Kathy McPhee or Carol Bayer Sager <laughs> if they're still buddies. One of the things, Kathy my partner, his name is Steve Lieber, right? One of the things Steve did, uh, I mean, Steve had 14 platinum recording artists. He did Moscow Circus. He did Ninja Turtles Live, Ice Spades, <laughs> you know, uh, Beatlemania. Mm -hmm. And then he managed Aerosmith and Ted Nugent and wow. Golden Earring, Def oh, Leppard, God. Joe Jett, Michael Bolton, on and on and on. Mm -hmm. on you mm -hmm. know, a, a real icon. He's done so many things. He freaked out over this thing. He's got this company called Metaflix. And so he said, uh, you know, let's talk to Ken. If they can beat out this, if he can do more than this company's doing, then we'll go with him. Wow. And I said, I said, Dean, are like you that. excited or what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's excited now. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just love the uh, potential benefits to humanity. Yeah. That's what yeah. I like about it. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just the applications alone. All about love. Yeah. And then Ken told me the other night, he said, Pepe goes, if they wanted to. I can make the dog and cat's mouths move in sync <laughs> with whatever's coming out of the the toy. Yeah, because otherwise grandma will say, is this thing real? Or where's this coming out of? Is but instead what? of a toy, we're talking yeah. about putting it in a pillow. Yeah, that, no, I think that's amazing. Yeah. So when yeah. the patient goes to sleep at night, they can, he can hear. hear oh, that's, that's, that's yeah. great. Your yeah. favorite things that are built mm -hmm. in from the family. Yeah. So it's All right. pretty cool. It's really cool. Just, okay. That's great. Just lastly, Peppy, uh, can you tell us about your Warhol, Warhol project you're working on? Yeah, okay. So um, Steve Lieber and Bonnie Lautenberg went to the Warhol Foundation and licensed the exclusive rights to do Warhol on board. They then enlisted Sir Trevor Nunn, British royalty. He's like Sir Paul McCartney, Sir this one. Mm -hmm. you, you don't get knighted easily in the UK. So, mm -hmm. And he is the director of Cats and Les Mis. I believe he ran the Royal Shakespearean Theatre for 20 years. He wrote all the lyrics, so he's my co-author on the songs. I have six songs in the show. So you did all the music. Stephen, yes. Uh, yeah, it's a musical show. They've spent about $2.5 already. They went to London. They hired a cast of 24 people, five digital screens, full band, choreography, everything. And they filmed everything. They put it in the can, so it's like ready to go. Oh. The problem is Sir Trevor Nunn can't come up with a theater in England that he likes for all the stuff he wants to do graphically. And Broadway's a crazy scenario, too. Sure, sure. So they are talking about they're talking about building the Warhol Theater in the Brooklyn Navy Yard in Brooklyn. Wow. wow. It's probably 2023 it's going to go up, mm -hmm. but it's not if, it's kind of when. And remember, and two tickets to Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, <laughs> right? <laughs> From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> but I don't care one way or the other because I can live with Jeannie in a shoebox. 
and I'm retired. I got my ocean. He's right like, here. it better be a boot box. <laughs> I don't, I don't care anymore. I just don't care. I said, I don't care. But I said, don't, don't take offense. I don't care about Opera Pals. I don't care about all my songs. I got a few musicals in the can. Whoa, nothing. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Because the bottom line, if none of this takes off, we're on the ocean. We're on the beach. Wow. We're yeah. eating good. We're living life. We're going out there. We're taking our walks. You know, drinking our power shakes. That's a great attitude. Yeah, that's a great attitude. And I'll 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 give a little note since we uh, chatted a bit before the show about the Warhol Foundation and that maybe Chairman Mao shouldn't be as celebrated <laughs> on behalf of the Asian community because many of us and our ancestors were killed, beheaded by the chairman who's so celebrated in his you know, paintings, if, Mr. Warhol. If you Warhol. want to sit down and write me a little email to that effect, I wouldn't mind showing it to them. Well, this is going to be aired to the world. I read him an email. Okay, I'll send you an email. <laughs> yes, Okay, but it's not like me having it and showing it to my producers and yeah. showing it to Sutreva Nun and just hey, just so you know, yeah, yeah, just a little sensitivity yeah, from the quiet people, you know. <laughs> I tell you, you can't please everybody. So this no, gonna, no, you know what, you can't. And, yeah, I'm not as quiet and Asian as some, but uh, <laughs> all right, guys, listen. <laughs> this, <laughs> this was a great show. This yeah. was a yeah, great show. You. Go thank sleep till Brooklyn. All right, and, and what an <laughs> honor to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we really we, we enjoyed this. This was a the, you you are ensconced now. This is our our Ooh. first joint interview. <gasps> all right. Oh, <laughs> nice. I told nice. her I was going to pull her in on this. She was like, "What? No way!" <laughs> I'm so yeah, glad you on. joined him, Gene. Yes. Love you. Yeah. Okay, so, guys. All good. Right. Take care. Thank you we'll so much. You, uh, yeah, we'll just let us know, and we'll go from there. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. You guys will be VIP tickets. Front and center, for sure. <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right, guys. Enjoy. Take care. Thank okay, you. Bye-bye. bye. Blessings. <laughs> We hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you know someone who's relocated for retirement and wishes to share their story with us, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Our email address is gg at retirethere.com. Our website is retirethere.com. And you may follow us on Twitter at retirethere underscore. Now, if you've liked our show, please subscribe and rate it in Apple Podcasts. In the meantime, be well.